This is the 3D Viewmaster Crime Domain from UNCLE, the very important zombie affair. Napoleon Solo and Ilya Kuryakin stepped into the Miami airport after their flight from headquarters of UNCLE, United Network Command for Law Enforcement. As top UNCLE agents, they were assigned to what should have been a simple task. Find an exil named Delgado and escort him to New York. There, he would appeal to the Council of Nations for help for his country, San Marcos, now terrorized by the dictator, El Supremo. The first contact man in a Panama hat responded correctly to the prearranged signal. He lit Napoleon's cigarette, then gave the match block to him. Written inside the cover was a message, Seaside Hotel. Napoleon nodded. But a second man appeared, dressed exactly as the first. Which was the real contact? Napoleon used the same signal, and a man gave him a packet of matches. But there was no message inside. Instantly suspicious, Ilya hurled the matches into a trash can. They exploded with a roar, ripping the can apart and shattering windows. Ilya shuddered. What if we lighted on one? Outside, they hailed a cab for the seaside hotel. But even in the taxi, they weren't safe. Following them was Ramirez, secret agent for El Supremo. His eyes gleamed. So you escaped the matchbox bomb, he said aloud. Well, try this. He picked up a mobile telephone. Attention, he ordered. Attention, Unit 1, roll. As the UNCLE agents kept approached and in the sea intersection, Napoleon saw a truck bearing down on them. Watch out. He shouted to the driver, too late. The truck smashed into the cab, knocking out Napoleon and Ilya. Ramirez ran up and demanded to know their destination. The cab driver told him. He motioned his two thugs and the three of them drove away. Viewmaster Reel 1 Picture 1 Later, the still groggy Napoleon and Ilya stood at the desk of the seaside hotel. Hit it again, Napoleon said, pointing the bell. Ilya rang it. The place is empty, he said. Somewhere upstairs, a woman screamed. Not quite, Napoleon said, dashing for the stairs. Picture 2 in a cheap room upstairs, Ramirez had his hands full. While his thugs pinned a tall, handsome man against the wall, Ramirez fought with a screaming, biting, clawing woman. Neither heard Napoleon's furious pounding on the door or the crash as it gave way beneath his shoulder. Picture 3 the UNCL each agents leaped into the fight. As expert carried fighters, they quickly deposed, disposed of the two thugs, then turned on Ramirez. Seeing that the game was up, he shielded himself behind the woman. At the door, he ran after the thugs. Napoleon turned to the tall man. Senor Delgado! He asked. The man nodded. I'm sorry we are late, Napoleon apologized. It seems that your government knew we were coming. There's little that escapes El Supremo's secret service, 
Delgado agreed. Conchita and I know that. How soon can you leave? Napoleon asked. Delgado smiled sadly. An exile must be ready to flee at a moment's notice. My wife and I can go now. Picture 4. But as they were leaving, a small object smashed through the window. Ilya picked it up. A dark doll. Ugly little monster, Ilya said. What is it? A voodoo doll, Napoleon answered. And it isn't meant to be pretty. Look. There's a picture of Senor Delgado pasted to it. And a pin is stuck between the eyes. Picture 5. Delgado groaned. His eyes widened. He clutched his throat, then fell to the floor as though striking dead. Later, in the hospital, order lies wheeled a stretcher into Delgado's room. More x-rays, one explained. Napoleon and Ilya stepped outside. Conchita spoke to one of the order lies. Hurry, Ramirez, we must get him out of here and onto the plane before anyone sees us. In the hallway, Napoleon asked the doctor why he had ordered more x-ray tests. I didn't, the doctor said. The two agents drew their guns and raced into the room. Blam! Ramirez slapped them. They grumbled to the floor. Unconscious and Delgado was wheeled out of the room. Picture 6. At UNCLE headquarters later, Napoleon and Ilya explained the situation to Mr. Waverly, their chief. Voodoo! Now really, Mr. Solo! Waverly scoffed. Voodoo or whatever you care to call it, Napoleon said. Waverly nodded. Yes, and whatever it is, it is keeping El Supremo in tight control of San Marcos. Delgado was his last real threat. Now with him gone. And his own wife, an agent, Ilya added. I'm not sure she is, Waverly said. But this new story seems to bear out your point. He threw a Spanish language newspaper across the table to Ilya, who read, Delgado returns, pledges full support to El Supremo. Napoleon snorted. I don't believe it. No, I, Mr. Solo, Bayfully said. That's why you and Mr. Kuryakin are going to San Marcos to rescue him. Picture 7. Meanwhile in San Marcos, El Supremo swaggered in front of Conchita and the striking Delgado. You were wise to return him, the dictator said. Now that he is safely here, I shall sleep better at night, Ramirez, escort Senora and her husband to the casa we have prepared for them. Buenos noches, Senora. You must real too. Picture 8 When they checked into their hotel in San Marcos, Napoleon and Ilya were amused to see the hotel's manicurist. Susie, trying to escape in a trunk. El Supremo will not let her go back to the United States, the clerk said. But not so amusing was what they found in their room. Instead of the UNCLE agent who was to help them, they found his lifeless body swinging in the closet. And when Ramirez showed up later to take them to see El Supremo, they knew he had killed their man. Before going to see El Sabrimo, they visited the hotel's barbershop for haircuts. There, Napoleon spoke to Susie. I'll help you get out if you help me. Call the Casa Verde Café and ask the exact time of their last show. Then leave the message in my room. Got it? The meeting with El Supremo was merely 
to allow the dictator to show off Delgado. He is quite well, El Sabrimo said. Now leave San Marcos. Ramirez drove them toward the airport, but Napoleon decided not to leave. As they drove, he blew out one of the tires using his cigarette case communicator and a tiny explosive. The delay made them miss their plane. They returned to the hotel. Picture 9. There, instead of Susie's message, they found the manicurist herself wrapped in a towel. I used your shower, she explained, then said that the message from the Kaiser Ved was to bring a silver dollar. Good girl, Napoleon said. We'll go this evening. At that same moment, in El Supremo's office, Ramirez was giving two envelopes to the dictator. Here, Solo's nail parings, he said. And here, Kuryakin's hair. The manicurist gave them to me. Excellent, El Sobrima. El Sobrimo clothed. He picked up a doll that he was making and smiled. Now we shall see. We shall see, he said. Picture 10. That evening, Napoleon and Ilya took Susie to the Casa Verde Café. Napoleon tossed a coin to a dancer who picked it up, then popped onto his lap. Only because I gave her the message, the silver dollar, Napoleon explained to Ilya and Susie. The dancer took a flower from her hair and stuck it in Napoleon's buttonhole. Then she bounced away. Let's get out of here, Napoleon said. But before they could arise, Ramirez swaggered into the cafe. He stood in front of them, his hands on his hips. Well, Mr. Solo, he said, you and your friend wanted to stay in San Marcos. Now you will, as zombies. Picture 11. More voodoo? Napoleon asked. I thought that to make a zombie you need a part of the victim. That's right, Ramirez smirked. And we have them, don't we, Susie? But the nails, put the nails and hair where yours, Susie said. Mine, Ramirez gasped. Oh no, he clutched his throat, groaned and crumbled to the floor. Napoleon and Ilya grabbed her and dashed from the cafe. Outside they piled into Ramirez's jeep. Napoleon started the engine and they roared away. Picture 12. From directions hidden in the flower that the dancer had given to them, Napoleon drove to the house where the Delgados were held prisoner. He and Ilya disposed of the guards then entered the house. Now, he said to Conchita, Mind telling me why you switched sides and brought your husband back to San Marcos? Because he is my husband and I want to see him well, Conchita said. The doctors couldn't cure him. Only one person could, Mama Lou, the last of the great voodoo priestesses. They say that she taught El Supremo all he knows, a very great woman. Well, as she helped him, Napoleon asked. We haven't seen her yet, Conchita said. Oh, Mr. Solo, will you take us? Napoleon nodded. They wheeled Delgado outside and put him in the jeep. The others climbed aboard. Napoleon put the car in gear. To the mountains, Conchita said. Mama Luz camp. Picture 13. While the jeep bounced through the jungle, back in El Supremo's headquarters, the dictator tried to rose Ramirez. Ramirez. He mixed a powerful liquid and poured it down the agent's throat. Ramirez spluttered and sat up. You check us, El Supremo snarled. Letting them get away. Now, I want you to take some men and find Mama Lou. 
that must be where they are taking Delgado. And do not fail me this time. Understand? Picture 14. The following morning, while Ramirez was searching for Mamalou, Napoleon's sheep ran out of gas on the edge of El Supremo's plantation. Here, dozens of zombies, living dead men, worked the fields. Napoleon asked the foreman for gas. He went to the house to get it, and one of the zombies dashed up to the jeep. Go quick, he said. Foreman went to call soldiers. Soon there will be much trouble, you go. Thanks, Napoleon said. Can we do anything for you? The zombie shook his head. The dead need nothing. Napoleon hurried his people into the forest. It looks like we walk from here to Mamalus, he said. If he is as good as you say, Conchita, our trouble soon will be all over and we'll be headed for New York. But their trouble was far from over. Even as they climbed the mountain, Ramirez was whispering into the car of ancient Mamalu. And if you don't help El Supremo, I have orders to burn you alive. The old woman crackled. He threatens me? Why, I used to take him on my knee and spank him. Now he calls himself El Supremo and orders me too. Very well, mother, he asks you, Ramirez said. When they come, put on a good show, then give him his flask to drink from. That's all you have to do. Later that night, Napoleon and his party staggered into camp. They set Delgado on the ground. What took you so long? Mama Lou nagged. Don't look so surprised. I know why you are here. Bring him over to the fire where I you can see. Reel three. Picture 15. They laid Delgado on a cot in the center of the four circle. Mama Lou hovered him over him, a ceremonial knife in her hand. She moved away and sprinkled water on the fire. Winking slyly at Ramirez, hidden in the background, she passed the flask to Napoleon who drank from it. After all, the party had drunk. Mamalu placed the flask to Delgado's lips. Straightening, she faced a crude wooden altar. Now let the spirit of the evil, one leave this man and enter the body of the, of the sacrifice, she intoned. She turned from the altar and bent over Delgado. Picture 16. Rise! She said, it is done. I did not use his flask. Delgado slowly opened his eyes. He blinked, looked at Mamalu, then toward the fire. He rose from the cot and staggered into Conchita's arms. A roar arose from the natives clustered around Mamalu. A drum sounded, then another. They settled into a wild, primitive rhythm. The natives leaped into a dance. Conchita looked up. Oh, Mama Lou, you've done it. Picture 17. Yes, she's done it, Ramirez screamed, bursting through the undergrowth. He raised his pistol and fired. Mama Lou fell to the ground. Suddenly, his soldiers swarmed into the clearing. Napoleon and Ilya drew their pistols and fired. Ramirez fell dead. The natives dashed among the soldiers, swinging their machets, and in a few minutes it was all over. Picture 18. Napoleon crossed to where Susie held Mamalou. Is there anything we can do? he asked. Nothing, Mamalou said. I taught him all he knows, and he used it for evil. Tell him I died, cursing his name. She fell limp. A doll rolled from her hand. Pasted to it was a postage stamp that pictured El Supremo. Picture 19. 
The natives left and they were alone. Napoleon took his cigarette case communicator from a pocket. Clear channel D, he called into the microphone. Picture 20. In New York, Waverly received a call. Yes, he said into his desk communicator. We have still Gato, sir, Napoleon's voice came through. Now we need transportation out of here. Right, Waverly said. Control has your position and you should be picked up within the hour. Picture 21. Finished with his transmission, Napoleon put the communicator back into his pocket. As he did, a limousine escorted by two jeeps filled with soldiers drove up. El Supremo stepped out and walked up to the party. Shoot them, he ordered, over there by the ledge. One moment, Excellency, Napoleon called. I have a message for you. Nothing you can say will help, El Supremo snapped. Not even this, Napoleon held up Mameluke's doll. El Supremo flinched, then recovered his poise. What kind of nonsense is this? he asked. Mama Lou gave it to me, Napoleon said. She died cursing your name. A lie, El Supremo whispered hoarsely. Anyway, you must believe in its power to make it work. And you don't believe. Mama Lou did, and that's what's important, Napoleon said. Let's give it a try, shall we? Got a pin, Ilya? Ilya held out his fountain pain, pen. Suddenly, unable to stand more, El Supremo leaped for the doll. Napoleon held it away. Ilya pressed a release on the pen, sending a tiny dart into the doll. El Supremo screamed and clutched his throat. With a groan, he fell dead. Many hours later, Napoleon and Ilya stood before Waverly's desk at UNCLE headquarters. I'm sorry that we couldn't bring Delgado back, sir, Napoleon said. But with El Supremo dead, he was needed to take over the government of San Marcos. Very well, Waverly answered. I understand. It's too bad about that Mamelou woman. But then... There's one thing I'd like to know. How you did it? Did what, sir? Napoleon asked. Got rid of El Supremo. Simple, sir, Ilya said. We scared him to death. 